Hello, everyone. My name is Qiu Shi Wu. Today, I want to show our project, Understanding and Detecting Disordered Error Handling with a Precise Function Theory. And I finished this project with Aditya, Navid, Stephen, and Tang Jie. Before we talk about the um, detecting disordered error handling box, I first want to Im import the two important parts of error handling code. Error handling code or error release code actually consists of two parts, cleanup operations and also error handling parts. The cleanup operations are typically used to clean up the resources that are previously initiated by some um, functions. For example, the most commonly used cleanup operations, including the allocation functions or ref count decrease functions, or also like the unregistered functions in this code example. And the second part of error related code is the error handling part. The program will handle the errors through returning errors, print out error messages, stop the current execution, or using some error handling functions like bug, bug on, or panic. And the previous work uh, mostly focused on the handling related um, or handling related part, but not the cleanup related um, operation. For example, some work works on error propagation related bugs, and some of them are try to detecting the error handling severity level related um, bugs. And only a small part of them attempt to detect the missing cleanup operations. Like they try to detecting missing release, missing ref count decrease operations. Uh, however, none of them can comprehensively or systematically detect wrong cleanup operations. And most of them could only um, handle some commonly used cleanup operations, like commonly used release functions or commonly used um, ref count decrease functions. And uh, also, most of them are based on um, fun the detecting method is based on the function name, which means that the precision rate or recall of those such work will not be very good. However, if we using the cleanup operations incorrectly, there will be some critical issues. For example, if we're calling cleanup operations inadequately, there will be some missing release, missing ref count decrease box, just like most of the previous work are trying to solve this kind of problem. And also, if we're calling cleanup operations redundantly, it will generate some double free or double unlock box. And furthermore, if we're calling cleanup operations in an incorrect order, there will be some use of free or double free light box. And in this project, we refer such box that caused by incorrect cleanup operations as disordered error handling box. And the goal of this project is to systematically study and detect disordered error handling box. And the, before we're talking about detecting disordered error handling box, we, the first question could be like, how can we clean up correctly? In this project, we want to argue that clean up correctly means correctly use function pairs. And here we have introduced the idea of function pair. And the function pair consists of two, two functions. The first is the leader function, and second is the folder function. And the leader function will initiate some, is an initiate operation against some resources. And the folder function actually used to recover or clean up the resources that are initiated by the leader function. So most of the folder function are typically used as cleanup operations. Therefore, we can argue that correctly use function pairs means we can correctly, correctly clean up. Here is a simple toy example to show the function pair. And here we want to show the function pair is the team lock and the key three. Team lock is, is a mostly commonly used allocation functions in the Linux kernel, which is used to allocate some memory. And key three is, can also be um, used to release the allocated memory that allocated by team lock. So in this function pair, we call team lock as a leader function and key three as a Follower function. And the follower function typically perform cleanup operations, just like the key three in this example. 
So the most important step of identifying disordered error handling bug is correctly pairing functions. So our questions could be changed to how to collect the function pairs correctly and comprehensively. And I'd first like to introduce some intuitive approaches that are used by most of the previous work. The most commonly used approach is namespace approach. For example, searching the function name to check if the function name including some keywords like aloca, free, or ink decrease. And also some works try to use the NLP based approach, which are trying to checking the function description and try to see if those functions are allocation related functions or free functions or rest count related, related functions. Further, some works also use pattern mining based approach to and try to pair the functions and by detecting the uh, function pairs that have a occurrence uh, in have a most uh, have most occurrence times. However, this intuitive approach have high false positive high, or high false negative, and also they cannot handle in customized functions well because customized functions may don't have um, a good function description or their function name also may change it a lot. And in this project, we prefer to using uh, using the structure of error handling, so-called as error handling stack. For example, in this code example, there are three pairs of functions. The first pair is the function device register and device unregister. And the second pair is device allocation function and the device release function. And the third pair is a video register function and also the video unregister function. As we can see, the first called leader function will typically be handled at last. For example, the first called leader function in this code pieces is a device register function on line four. However, it's handled at last on line 26. It's a device unregister function. And uh, we have introduced the idea of error handling stack, which can represent the functions in one path. For example, uh, here is the uh, error handling stack, which formed by functions in line four, line seven, and line twenty-six. Because if we consider, because we can considering the execution path, like the function we are first executing the function on line four, and further it go to the function on line seven, but it meets some errors in line seven. So it will go to line 26, and the functions in line 26 will handle the, it will clean up the opera operations that perform on line four. So we call the functions on line four, line seven, line 26, and the following and also follow on functions as a error handling stack. What if we considering two adjacent error handling stacks? For example, the first error handling stack is just the functions that we just uh, introduced. And the second error handling stack is the execution for the for the passes like execution line four, executing on line seven, and executing functions on line thirteen. However, it will meet some errors in line thirteen, so it will go to line twenty four, and further executing the functions on line twenty six and also twenty eight. If we subtract these two error handling stacks, we can get an error handling delta. During the subtract operation. We're only considering the successfully executing the function, which means that we don't considering the mm, error handling, uh, error generating point. For example, like the line seven in the first error handling stack or the line 13 in the second error handling stack. By calculating the delta, we can get a function video device alloc allocation functions on line seven and also a video device release function on line 24. So we can find that the error handling delta are just function pairs. So based on this approach, we can compare a lot of adjacent error handling stacks and get a lot of error handling delta and get a lot of function pairs. Furthermore, based on these function pairs, we can try to detect the disordered error handling bot. At first, we, we would like to detect the disordered error handling cases based on the collected function pairs. For example, for mm, during analyzing the error handling stack, if we find that error handling stack is like allocation one, allocation two, three one, three two, 
And also we have function pairs, local one and free one is a function pair, and local two and free two is function pair. And then we can find that there is a incorrect order usages for free one and free two because it should be like a stack like structure. So the free free two should be called before the free one. So we refer to such cases as a disordered error handling case. Furthermore, not all the disordered error handling cases are disordered error handling box. And to detecting the disordered error handling box, we will further eliminating the harmless, harmless cases. For example, we will eliminating the harmless cases by dependency reasoning. Also, we will eliminating the infeasible passes by checking the infeasible constraints. And for the evaluation, and our tools have analyzed uh, three mostly commonly used system level programs and also a library. And uh, it takes hours for our tools to pairing the functions and also detecting the uh, disordered error handling box in this software. And our tools has identified thousands of function pairs and also hundreds of disordered error handling box with a pretty good precision rate and also recall rate. In conclusion, cleanup operations are commonly misused, and we propose disordered error handling box that are caused by improper cleanup operations. And we propose an error handling delta based pairing mechanism to detecting the function pairs. And further, we can detect disordered error handling box based on these function pairs. And this project has identified large number of function pairs and also critical disordered error handling box are caused by, and then this disordered error handling box can cause Double free, use upper free, memory leak, and also other severe issues. Thank you. I think that's all my presentation today.